This is William Ray with CUTV News. We're down here at Square Victoria for Occupy Montreal. We're here with Felix, who uh, works with the Communications Committee here at Occupy Montreal. How many cities are we in worldwide now, Felix? Uh, currently, the stats are at 1,595 city and 72 country. And how many people do we have here? Uh, well, it varies, but uh, we, we I guesstimate is about 800 at the moment. Okay, and with the with the movement growing worldwide uh, what do you see of the chances uh, of success for this movement actually being able to crack through and change something well i think i think the chances are pretty high because we can see that the population at the moment is is it is all right with what the movement is proposing and the fact that the movement is it has a behavior as a group is really like civilized i think that people aren't ready to like say yeah we have to get rid of that movement because that movement is a plague or something like that i think that people are actually positive about it and what do you think it is we need now to to spark this and move to the next level and and actually get governments to start changing policy all uh, general generalized uh, population mobilization is pretty important uh, the more the population will mobilize uh, in an effort to like say we agree with them it's not necessarily for the population to come and, and camp here there's not really a need for that that's that's like that's like the front window of the store the, the material is inside so people have to look at the movement and say okay what's the movement about and then figure it out for itself it's a revolution from the inside it's people that have to change from the from what they were used to and say we need something different from now on so i think that the occupation here is one step in a whole lot of other steps that are going to come uh, later on as the movement grow and as we gain importance toward the population. I mean, the, the movement itself is saying of itself as a representative of the 99%, which is like just a number, but still means representing the mass of the people against the few that rules. And I think that as people realize that, they will eventually say, we should have the right to gain to regain control over how our destiny is managed and so people shouldn't feel that they can't participate just because they can't come down here and camp no. they can participate from home they can phone their yeah. mp they can exactly exactly the movement doesn't necessarily you know the movement the movement in the long run does not promote politic i think politic for up until now we have noticed has never done anything good it's always the same thing you've got one party coming in saying the last party has like fucked the economy and then there's another party that comes in and says well the last one did exactly the same thing so in the end you just go all right so you're all doing the same thing so why are you still there so this is calling for fundamental change reform at, at a base level to the system that uh, well, governance that i wouldn't we use. say i wouldn't say reform i, I mean uh, we probably need, we, we, not probably, we do need a period of transition to go from the system in which we live currently because we cannot do a radical change in one day we just like shut down all the institution and that's it, you know, we've changed the world. No, it doesn't work like that. It's not like putting a new t-shirt. Uh, there's a whole lot of step that have to be put forward in order for that change to happen in a... Uh, in, an, in a unified way so that people don't like in one shot feel like whoa whoa, whoa whoa what am i losing there no you're not losing you're gaining but people have to understand that for now you know a lot of people go like oh well you want the uh, yeah let's say like me personally i would like the abolishment of the monetary system for a lot of people is it's going to be like what am i going to lose everything all i've worked for my for my entire life and the answer is no you're not losing anything what you're actually doing is preventing people from losing everything by doing so. The movement, the movement does not promote like a... A lot of people view it like a sort of socialist communist movement. I don't view it, view it as a socialist or communist movement, but more as a humanitarian movement in the sense that everybody should have right to health, education, home, food, which are the basic need for everybody. The rest becomes superficial. If you don't really need it in life, you don't really need it. And I think at the moment we've created that system that promotes people interest in having more because this is what we gratify. The more you have, the, the more it shows that you have accomplished what you wanted in life, which is not really true. You know, you don't, material is not really, that's why we always say, you know, you can be rich and unhappy. 
So it basically proves that money doesn't make people happy. It just gives you a sense of comfort that is not necessarily fulf uh, fulfilling uh, personally. It will be like socially, because socially, you know, you'll be, you'll have a, comf uh, a comfy way of life. You won't have the bother about wondering if you're going to eat tonight, where you're going to sleep, or things like that. But it doesn't, you know, if you're not loved, you're not loved. No matter if you're rich, so internally, I think it's just a question of like changing people's attitude toward what is really happiness. Is happiness being fulfilled by material or happiness being fulfilled by the fact that when you walk down the street, you don't see sadness, you know? So basically, that's it, you know? That's my point of view. I'm not, I'm not like a spokesperson or anything, you know? It's my point of view. All right, thank you. This is William Ray with Concordia University Television at Square Victoria for Occupy Montreal.